Hello, 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 podcast creators, and welcome back. So today we are doing door rounds, um, door rounds, door hangers, wooden um, reefs, uh, whatever you call it, we are doing those today. Um, and basically what we're doing today is just showing you more of my placing everything down and then decorating it. Um, I do use like Cricut. Um, vinyl to do this and I'm also going to show you some where I've scroll saw the letter so you see there's a little 3D element to them so I'm just going to show you a few of these uh, during this episode so that you can see um, the process so before we do that please like subscribe hit that bell and as always thank you so much for watching and joining now let's get started let's talk a little bit about the rounds I use a couple of different wood is expensive right now wood is expensive dun, dun, dun. like wood is expensive right so I use what's the better deal at the moment when I go into the store so um, of course I'm going to my local hardware store it is much better to buy a sheet and then be able to a sheet of plywood and be able to um, cut as many circles as you can out of that sheet. I use 15 inch circles and 24 inch circles. So um, let's see. This is a 15. Mm, this is a 16 inch circle because I went a little bigger on my last cuts. So let me see. This is a 15 inch circle. So. You can see, just got that little bit of an inch difference ah, all the way around. But so I'm using a 16 inch today. But like I said, this is a 15 inch. So a cute little, this a 15 inch is what I have on my door currently. Um, but you also can do like a nice huge one. Like that is a 24 inch circle. And this joker is beautiful when it's done. So... Um, just a few, like I said, and I use anywhere from a quarter inch to um, a half inch. Like I said, just depends on what's there, what I feel like is the better deal. They both serve their purpose um, as far as hanging on the door. So I also make um, smaller ones, and I've just knocked everything over, but I also make smaller ones for like addresses. And those I do like to use the quarter inch plywood. Um, so, you know, cute little ways to uh, add to your porch and, you know, your style of your porch and make it look good. So, um, once I cut the round using a router and then I use the circle, I'll put it in the description below. I use the, the thing that helps you make the circles. Oh! It's a circle kit and I can't remember who makes it right now, but I'm going to put that in the description below because I've made, you'll see videos where um, me and Major Bourne have, um, mostly Major Bourne, <laughs> have made guides, circle guides for where we've done it ourselves, but after a while they kind of, um, they kind of lose where the circle, it, they kind of lose the ability to stay at a certain amount of inches, at least in what we've done so far. So I'm sure as we keep doing them, we will get better. But that's just just been my experience. So I went ahead and just bought a circle kit from the local hardware store. Um, so from the circle, as you can see, I paint them like you saw with the Hey Honey. It is painted fully, you know, um, where here and with the address. Um, Things I've, you know, taped off. So I've taped off the top and then painted the bottom and I'll stain the top. So I'll put a piece of tape going across here and then I'll stain the top upward. So um, there's also, you can also tape them in different ways. Like this one is got the paint at the top and the paint at the bottom where I will stain the middle. So just different ways that you can do that as well. Again, here's my round. Here's my stain. So like I said, I've already cut it out on the vinyl. Um, I can put what font this is below because I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but home is where my dog is. So I'm going to put that here. Like I said, I've already weeded it, cut it, 
cut it and weeded it. So now it's just a matter of, you know, using the transfer paper to take it off and place it where I want. So that being, let's see what my H hits. That is as simple as that. When I'm using vinyl, I like to seal it. And normally I seal it with Mod Podge. Normally I use it, I seal it with Mod Podge. So, and this is just me being lazy and not going over and getting my scraper. So, the little things you don't, most people don't show you. So to lay that down, what I found is it's better when you like, like some people pull it off and it looks like, oh wow, that comes off and then you try to pull it and all your stuff is pulling up. Like you need to make sure like it is tight. Like I don't just pull like this. I try to pull tighter because I feel like I get a better, it removes it without taking stuff up that it's not supposed to take up like this right here. So that I can catch that and then just come back around. Sit that over there. And so that is as simple as that. I will put um, Mod Podge over top of this. Normally I use a foam brush. Sometimes I use my finger. I'm going to use this Mod Podge because I can. <laughs> so normally I like to use the other one, but I don't have it with me. So I'm going to use this one and I don't like to waste stuff. So I will use what comes off of this because I'm cheap. Um, so I'm going to use my finger because I don't want to mess up a brush either. So normally I would use a foam brush just so I can seal it in place. And then you want to do the whole thing. You don't want to just do the words because I've done that before and then you just got this shiny spot right where your words is. So if you want it to look professional, you want to make sure that you are um, you can also, let me see, I've also sprayed with, let me, I keep getting up y'all, I'm sorry. I thought I was together, but I'm not as together as I thought I was. Sometimes I do the whole thing and then I'll just spray it with this polyurethane. Um, so either way, I found that either way, way has worked. Everybody that I've done around for, and I've been doing them for quite a while, has not had um, an issue with the vinyl trying to come back up um, with just using the Mod Podge. And as you can see, I'm only putting it right now where the paint is because I still need to, if I'm, I'm still want to stain this up here, which I probably won't now. Ugh. So, because I don't have the stain in here with me. And I don't want to wait for it to dry. So I think actually this one, I'm not going to do that at all. So I probably could go ahead and put glue all the way through. Which that's not really sealing anything. So it doesn't really matter. So if you're doing this, because I take risks with my own little fingers, you know, you want to make sure you don't do anything, get yourself, give yourself splinters or anything like that. So you do want to be mindful of that. But here, Ooh. and another thing you could do, like depending on the ribbon and stuff you use. So is you can put like a strip of ribbon right here. 
which I may do because I'm going to use this ribbon. And I have some checkerboard black and white. But I'm going to let that dry a little bit while we talk about... Um, so while we talk about the... What is this? Scrolling. So I recently, or a little couple of months ago, got a scroll saw. A scroll saw helps you cut things like MDF and, and thinner pieces of wood into letters. Like So you don't have to go and find a certain... You can make any word you want instead of just being um, stuck with doing only what the store has. So like the Hey Honey is scrolled like i said you have that depth that helps you see that it's scrolled and it gives it just a little bit more of an upscale look right so um you can use scrolling for those special projects or a mixture of scrolling and vinyl so when i do scrolling so i'm not going to use the hey i'm going to use this hello here so i scrolled that right so it's MDF and I've spray painted it black. You could stain the wood or you can leave it like where it is. Like I'm going to leave this one again where it is and then I'm going to seal it with a polyurethane. So with this you just find like if you want it over to the side and then you can have like a flower thing coming down this way if you want it in the middle and then your flower thing can be like even between the two. So with this I use wood glue. Um, right now this is what I have in the house so this is what I'm using. Um, but with this you have to be like wood glue you don't need a whole lot of anyway. So I normally use my fingers again because you know it's just like with eating do you don't need a fork <laughs> well I guess you do on some things but so I would normally take the thicker pieces of my word and that's where I would put my glue and then with my finger I will spread that glue to my thinner pieces so and then I'll I try to watch where the glue goes because it will dry yellow, which takes away from the look of your piece if people see that. So I try to make sure I wipe up any excess. And it's another reason why you don't want to use a lot of glue because it just it takes it just it takes away from your piece you know when people can see the big yellow glue marks around the letters so I just try to make sure there's a thin coat around as many of the letters as possible so that it stays down um, and then like I said just wiping up the sides as I go through so that I don't have that excess where people can see it so it's not always super super clean but I try to get it as clean as possible so uh, once I have all of the letters to having some type of glue on them and then like I said clean up as much of the um, pieces that shouldn't have glue on them up then what I do is just put it in place and this thing like draws super quick so you know you figure out where you want it to be you press down on it and literally in a few minutes this thing is ready to go so you have that there are two ways to um, do the bow on these you can either do a bow where you you know make the whole bow and then you can you know just I go underneath and staple down the pieces that would naturally be at the bottom or um, and I saw this from someone else and I don't know who it was but I use it all the time now where you just take pieces mm. 
maybe pieces that are what is that seven seven eight inches and you just cut a couple of them a couple like I do normally six to eight and if I'm using two different types of ribbon maybe only four or five so I'm going to stop there because I am using two different types of ribbon here and same thing you just I mean you can measure it out but I've been doing this a while so I kind of got a feel for how long it should be and I just cut I'll just start cutting So you figure out what you want your middle piece to look like and where you want it to be um, and whether or not you want flowers on it. I think I'm just going to make this just a bow. So here you make your loop, put a couple staples in it, make sure it got everything which this one did not. There you go. Right? And then you just start working around that. If you know you want tails, you can also Go ahead. I just like, I just take a piece and kind of fold it like that. And then I stick it down the middle. And put some staples in. And then your other pieces. You can go back on it like that. And then. You can finish putting your loops in. So then the next step in this process after you make your bow and see it already looks super cute. Ooh, ooh is um I use um the screw eyes hooks so these things at one point I could find like a thing of a hundred but with everything with the COVID stuff things are just a little bit harder to find so I use those right and all I do is find two spots at the top and screw them down in it. Sometimes I have to take my drill and start a little starter hole. Um, I'm hoping that since I'm on camera, it'll be nice to me. But maybe not. <laughs> So you just screw it down. I'd say one of the hardest parts about this <laughs> for people who have hands that are getting weak. So like I said, you do that to two both sides. Normally I use twine, but I am out of twine today, y'all. I have a roll of it. I just don't know where it is right now. So I am going to use ribbon to finish this off. So like in this ribbon, actually, like if you want it to even give it more, like I could do that and that would just finish it. Right. So maybe I will do that. Let's just, what is that? So to do that, 
let's just go ahead and do it real quick take your hot glue gun and you just go along your natural line here that you made when you did the paint and you know hot glue gl dries quickly so sometimes I'll do just like half and not the whole thing and then I'll just lay my ribbon <laughs> on top and you know hot glue gets hot so be prepared don't burn yourself be careful all that good stuff and then I just take it and I'm gonna make sure you guys see all of this and I'll just glue it on the sides and then I'll end up cutting that little hanging piece off yeah. so you can finish it even more like which I did not do on these but another idea would be to um, paint the back if you want it to sometimes I do sometimes I don't I think it just really depends on how I feel um, because the you know having a solid back painted to me gives it more of a finish. All right, so the last part of this, once you have those screw eye hooks in, you just wanna take some twine or some ribbon in this case, and when I I just do a knot, but when I do my second knot, I like to put a little hot glue in between. So I just do that and again hot glue is hot <laughs> so don't burn yourself so I do that and then I just go around and do the same thing and it doesn't need to be super long because it's not on your door right so stick it through the eye hook Make sure it's not super twisted. Start a knot in between the knots. Like I said, I just put a little hot glue. And then I finish the knot. Tying it as tight as I possibly can. Cutting off the ex excess. And then there you have it. Like something beautiful as a gift or something for yourself to put on your door super super cute you know um, for those that are you that are doing business for yourself also a good little product that you can have as a business Put an extra little extra flavor by doing something like that put these down like if you have somebody who just likes simple stuff even just doing this would be enough and for some people like that is enough like that is super cute right that's all you need to do but for others so as you can see like I glued this while we were doing this video and it is do that and then just make a cute little bow that goes in the middle so if you do something like that you have I just normally fold it pinch it twist if you have only one sided fabric This one a little bit longer. And then normally I try to do three and then one tail. So that one will be a little bit longer.
I just like to twist it around instead of cutting all of that off. And I feel like I wasted it. If I twist it around, it's still all there, right? So from here, I take this one piece, always put it up, and then I decide where I want it to go. see that goes like that and then on the bottom part of the bow I staple it down so then I try to staple it where it will naturally it's supposed to lay down anyway and then the staples can be covered by your top bows So, I like to make sure my tails don't cover up my words. So sometimes I'll staple them down if they keep going where I don't want them to go. So there you have it. So there is your other one. I'll put eyelets on this one. flower and then you just have one with just the bow and it's final and then here's another scroll where you can do simply with just just a flower and no bows at all so just many different ways that you can use your creativity um, to you know make something beautiful for either again for yourself or for um, as a gift or as a business so thank you thank you thank you all for watching of course I'll post the pictures of these actually on the door um, so that you guys can see that as well so thank you again for watching truly appreciate you and I'll see you all the next time